This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not medical care or advice. Clinicians should rely on their own medical judgments when advising their patients. Patients in need of medical care should consult their personal care provider. Welcome to That's Pediatrics, where we sit down with physicians, scientists, and experts to discuss the latest discoveries and innovations in pediatric health care. From UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, welcome to That's Pediatrics. I'm your co-host, Amanda Pahalik, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics. And I'm your co-host, Arvin Srinath, Associate Professor of Pediatrics. Today, our guests are Dr. Gabriel Cisneros and Dr. Maya Raghavan. And our topic today is Clinicians for Climate Action. Dr. Gabe Cisneros is a board-certified pediatrician and fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics. He is also the medical director of UPMC Children's Express Care and co-chair of the Pennsylvania American Academy of Pediatrics Advocacy Committee. Dr. Cisneros received his medical degree from the University of Pittsburgh and completed his residency at the University of California, San Francisco, Fresno. He co-chairs both the Advocacy Committee and the Climate and Environmental Health Committee of the Pennsylvania Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. He is a founding member of Clinicians for Climate Action and leads the Communications Committee. Dr. Maya Raghavan is an Assistant Professor of Pediatrics in the Division of General Academic Pediatrics. She completed her medical school from Northwestern University, pediatric residency from Stanford Children's Hospital, and a General Academic Pediatric Fellowship from Boston Medical Center. Her work spans several topic areas, including climate justice, intimate partner violence prevention, language equity, and the provision of culturally affirming care. She serves as the Associate Vice Chair for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Research for the Department of Pediatrics, Associate Core Director for the University of Pittsburgh Clinical and Translational Science Institute, and Associate Program Director for the General Academic Pediatric Fellowship Program. She also co-chairs the Health Equity Committee for Clinicians for Climate Action. This year, she received the 2023 Pitt Sustainability Award for her commitment to leadership and sustainability as a faculty member with the University of Pittsburgh. Thank you both so much for joining us today. That was a lot of amazing things to get through in introducing (laughs) both of you. You're both so highly accomplished. Um, And we're really excited to have you on today to talk about clinicians for climate action. So usually we start by asking um, our guests to sort of share a little bit about their path to CHP. And maybe uh, you could also add on a little bit about your involvement with Clinicians for Climate Action. So I guess our path uh, began back in uh, 2020 during the pandemic. You know, it was a really difficult time with um, COVID. And at the same time, there was this other situation that was coming to a head, um, climate change. And for me personally, um, there was a a particular situation that occurred where... um, my daughter, she was back home with my mom, her grandmother, sitting for a week. The last night that she was there, there was this uh, unusual electric storm that occurred and subsequently uh, a wildfire. Mm. And um, they had to evacuate and uh, it was kind of a very scary situation. And and after that, it was kind of like a wake up call, I guess, mm-hmm. that this was something that really hit close to home, like literally and figuratively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so t- taking a step back, thinking, you know, what's going on here? What, what do we need to do to take on um, this uh, climate crisis? And mm-hmm. so um, that's, I think, when Maya and I started c- to connect and thinking about our roles as pediatricians, you know, w- what is our role um, in addressing this crisis? How can we um, protect children and ensure that they have a promising future? And so that's kind of like where things started um, moving. Yeah, and so I think, you know, I have um, always done a lot of health equity research and climate change. There's so many health equity considerations um, because marginalized communities are disproportionately impacted by the climate crisis, both in the United States and abroad. Um, And a lot of the work that I do around partner violence, it's so interwoven with climate change. I started getting interested in climate change advocacy, though, just as a parent of a four-year-old who was feeling so overwhelmed by sort of... by the climate crisis. And I spent, you know, some years just wrapped in my own angst about it and then really wanted to channel that anxiety into advocacy. And so that, you know, that's that's when um, Gabe and I started working on some of the initiatives that we've been working on. Um, I also really wanted to spend some time intentionally thinking about as a pediatrician, what is it that I should be 
doing? How can I advocate for climate change in the clinical setting and then more broadly at the policy level? Because, and we can talk about this more later, but climate change very much um, is something that needs to be solved at the structural level, at the policy level. Right. And um, so I, I started, we, we've been, we've talked a lot about what is it that we do at the individual patient level that is um, affirming, not scary for kids, and really centers the fact that it cannot be in our individual patients who solve the climate crisis. They are the ones that are disproportionately impacted. It is not their responsibility. And it's our responsibility as pediatricians to use whatever power we have to advocate kind of for policy change. So mm -hmm. those are kind of some of the things that got us started. Yeah, so so interesting how you kind of both started from this place as parents of young children, but also as pediatricians thinking, okay, this isn't just about my kid. It's also about all these patients that I'm interacting with and, and how can I do? So given that framework, um, can you tell us a little bit about like what is Clinicians for Climate Action and how exactly did you formalize sort of these feelings into an actual group? So the group was really born out of uh, fellowship that we took on, um, myself and uh, two uh, colleagues here at U UPMC, um, it was called the Climate Health Organizing Fellowship. Mm -hmm. nice. It was through uh, Cambridge Health Alliance, and over a period of six months, um, we basically met uh, online and learned how to organize healthcare professionals um, and uh, a way towards addressing uh, climate. And so uh, we decided what we really wanted was structural change um, at uh, our healthcare system. And so uh, we formed our group, um, Clinicians for Climate Action, and we brought uh, other uh, interested healthcare professionals in, into the group and came up with a letter calling on le healthcare leadership uh, for a number of actions, specifically to join the uh, White House and Health and Human Services uh, Climate Pledge, okay. committing to reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions 50% by 2030 and net zero by 2050, to join uh, Practice Green Health, which is an organization that provides the framework for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Also to incorporate um, sustainability into uh, healthcare, into the health uh, curriculums. We had a petition that we sent out to our colleagues, all the different healthcare professionals that we knew and, and worked with, and um, asking them, to sign on to this letter, uh, and ultimately we had over like 300 signatures and sent it to leadership. And to our surprise, uh, within a day, uh, we had a positive response from the CEO of uh, UPMC. Wow, um, that's amazing. And in support of uh, what we were asking for, and and in addition to that, basically um, a list of interested um, healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, students, allied healthcare professionals, um, all interested in, in pursuing this work. So so from there, we've really kind of branched out and uh, taking on different projects, uh, finding ways that we can improve sustainability within our own uh, individual workplaces. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll add, I'll yeah. add to that. That was an amazing description yeah. of how yeah. we form. The, the, the focus of Clinicians for Climate Action is on um, decarbonization and healthcare. Okay. And the reason that we are focusing on that is healthcare, um, has the second uh, highest, U.S. healthcare systems have the second highest carbon emissions out of all commercial businesses in the U.S. If the, health, if the U.S. healthcare system was a country, it would be the 13th highest carbon emitter in the world. Mm, um, wow. And so I think as, as physicians, um, as, as healthcare clinicians, we, um, we have a lot of uh, opportunity to work on decarbonizing um, our own healthcare systems um, and to make sure that we're um, promoting sustainability within our healthcare systems. Um, and so I think, it'd be, especially because like healthcare systems are there to help children thrive. And so it's really aligned perfectly with some of the climate justice work. And so that was a, another reason that we decided to focus specifically on that area. And there's so many pieces to, to cl the climate crisis and how to address it. But uh, Clinicians for Climate Action does focus um, specifically on healthcare decarbonization. Got it. So it's it's really interesting and really cool just from people who are trying to enact change and form groups to hear the roots of this for group formation, not only with your personal experiences, but also professional experiences and educational experiences too. Um, I, I'm trying in my head to figure out which question should come next, so I'll let you decide if it, which one is more triaged higher. Is, um, can you talk about 
the role of physicians ourselves in enacting policy or advocating for policies to prevent or delay or, or uh, you know, to mitigate against climate change, and two, segue into initiatives for your group, specifically towards decarbonization. Yeah, do you, mm-hmm. I, I can start and then Gabe, do you sure. want to, or is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, right. <laughs> um, so I think there's so many opportunities for healthcare clinicians to be involved in um, addressing the climate crisis. Um, and it, it can be, and there's, they're on so many different levels. And so I think fundamentally, um, being the person in the room that says, hey, what about thinking about sustainability? You know, when we mm-hmm. talk about, so anytime we're talking about um, extreme heat or um, flooding or any sort of extreme weather pattern, I think linking it to climate, saying the word climate, because often that's not happening. Mm, um, right. So being the person that does that is really powerful. And that's not something where you have to join a committee or, or I mean, it's just something that you do on a day-to-day basis. But what I've found is being the person to say, you know, I know that we're talking about um, flooding and how flooding may impact our our building, you know, let's remember that because of the climate crisis, it's going to get worse. So how can we think about sustainability for our building? Things like that, I think are really, really powerful. And we can do that on a daily basis. Mm. Um, Incorporating um, pieces of of climate change work into your uh, your clinical profession or your your clinical practice, excuse me, um, that really focuses on supporting kids' health. And so, for example, when I do sports physicals, I always talk about heat prevention. I always talk about making sure that you have, you know, a water bottle or that you have, you know, that you you stay well hydrated because the, um, you know, the the, the heat um, emergencies are only going to continue. So I just want to make sure that you're protected. And so doing it like that, I think, brings um, a climate lens to your your clinical visits without saying – um, without talking about mitigation, it's more talking yeah. about ad- adaptation and, and prevention to make sure that we're keeping kids healthy. Um, and so those are those are you know two things. And then there are so many things to do on the on the policy level when we think about institutional policy, state policy, federal policy. Um, so I'll turn that over. I'll turn it over to Gabe to talk about that. Mm. It's huge. Thank yeah. you. So like Maya was saying, um, through the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, we have opportunities to meet directly with our representatives uh, in the legislature um, and more locally as well to just talk about this situation and help educate um, decision makers about how important this is to child health, help connect those dots because they're so busy and maybe don't have all the information that they need to make these important decisions that we can serve in that role. You know, as professionals, we have an important platform, I think, that we should uh, utilize and help because people are thinking about this and asking questions and and we have an important role with our um, education uh, to really kind of clarify things and I think sometimes there's a lot of confusion misunderstanding and so we can be those voices that help kind of explain and help lead towards um, positive uh, outcomes. And can I add I'm sorry can I add Please, one more no, thing that that was amazing and yeah. I, I you know Gabe is an amazing um uh, advocacy expert, and he does a lot of uh, advocacy work. The one other thing I will say about what we can do as pediatricians, so I know this is going to sound a little cliche because people say this a lot about climate change, but the young people are where it's at. Like, they are the ones that are leading the charge. Right. Um, so we as pediatricians can can support their work. Some of the first um, advocacy that I got involved with around climate was working with a youth activist. Um, okay. And I learned so much from him and his work. And And I think that as pediatricians, as people that are supporting the voices of children, we can also support that their incredible work that they're doing in, in, in the climate change space and in the climate justice space, because there's a lot of young you know, young people that are act- that are activists in that space too. So I just wanted to put that out there too, that I think we can do a lot to support their work and support the work that communities are doing. I really appreciate you two bringing it down to the level of tangibility mm-hmm. for pediatricians because, I mean, this is, I mean, an issue that, I mean, is a lot of really unfathomable to a lot of people. And the question is where to start. Right. And for the healthcare providers listening, for the families listening, for the children listening, right? It's thinking about what we can do now versus we have to talk to one of you to talk about policies for advocacy and things like that, which, I mean, things can stop pretty quickly. And, and it's hard to get over that activation energy. That's huge. Can we now, um, so you, you helped me organize my thoughts better. So now, can, can you talk about the group's initiatives, um, what you've done and, and where, where you plan to go? 
So um, in terms of where people can learn about ways to become involved, I would uh, direct them to our group's website that we keep updated, lots of different ways to connect. We want to take people's ideas and, and, and run with them. Like, we don't have all the answers, you know. I think people know best ways that they can contribute, and so we would just want to foster that um, the energy and, and interest and enthusiasm. Uh, we have our own ideas about things that we'd like to get done, and if people want to join us in those efforts, we have different committees centering around, uh, as mentioned before, education, te- teaching uh, trainees about climate and health. If people want to be more involved on the advocacy level, there are certainly opportunities to do that as well. Really, I would just encourage people to think about where in their workplace they identify areas that can be improved and and take small actions, I think, that um, when scaled up can really make uh, an important difference. Um, Just a specific example, uh, there's a a pediatrician, uh, Dr. Mary Enrique, she's president of the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and she she practices in central Pennsylvania and has developed community garden at their practice, and it's very successful. They're providing um, healthy uh, foods to the community, and and so we've kind of taken that idea and, and are trying to incorporate it in our own practice. And, and the reason that relates to, to climate is because it talks about issues of where our food comes from and um, sustainable agriculture, as well as healthy eating and being outside. So it turns out when you do this work that there end up being a lot of co-benefits. So one, one thing also can help improve in uh, a lot of other ways. So hmm. it's what makes it so interesting and fun and, and a great way to just meet people and build on all the great work that other people are doing. Nice. Awesome. I, I wanted to kind of shift back a little bit to one of something you were talking about earlier with education, right? And trying to educate policymakers, um, educate other physicians and how to how to think about climate change. Um, can you share with us a little bit about sort of the intersection of climate change and child health and what is known about how, how climate change is impacting child health? Yeah, I can I can start and then I'll, um, so climate change impacts every facet of child health, like it's interwoven with child health. Um, and so there it's, you know, you can think about it at the, the direct level. So um, so related to heat, related to weather emergencies, um, the, the physical trauma that children that are in disasters experience. Um, you can think about it kind of then at the next level, it's related to pollution, which is related to asthma, to allergies, to Lyme disease. I mean, and then also, um, the, the mental health impacts of the climate crisis that a lot of young people are, are facing, um, both both related to kind of the, the just being scared of, of what is going to happen to our, our world and kids that are in areas that um, that have undergone a weather um, extreme weather event, um, the mental health um, impacts of being then the trauma impacts of, of that as well and so really it's just so interwoven with child health and every facet of child health you you can't you know you, you can't unlink the two mm-hmm. and so that's why as pediatricians I think it's it's really such an opportunity for us because re- really every facet of child health the the climate crisis will will impact yeah my, my I think you said it all I'll just say that in 2020 uh all the leading medical societies, journals, are basically raising the alert that this is a very important uh, health issue. Um, the World Health Organization says it's the single greatest health threat facing uh, humanity. So um, we really have to act accordingly, you know, give it the attention that it deserves. When I think about this as it relates to children, you know, children just need a sense of like security and safety and um, stability, and I, I think more than anything, the, the climate crisis introduces kind of this whole new way of living in, in a way that we don't, we can't really under, fully understand and, and predict. And, and so we're, we're kind of learning as we go along. And, and so what we want to do is, you know, change the way that we operate in a way that can help mitigate some of those uh, changes and maybe make for less severe. Um, uh, outcomes uh, in the future for them. Kind of a follow-up to that, I guess my question is like, in the process of doing this advocacy work and the education aspects, are there areas where you find people are 
surprised or unaware or is it more that people are generally like yeah yeah I know about climate change and it's like so overwhelming and so large that it's hard to think about it because it feels very difficult so to to like figure out how to how to overcome it right Mm -hmm. so I guess um, I'm kind of curious like what's the response in general to the process of educating people about the impact of climate change and child health and like what are the challenges that you feel like you're facing in that process and like what do we need to do to address those challenges? I I would say it's probably both of those things but also a lot of um, excitement to kind of take it on. You Mm -hmm. know I think people want to do something. A lot of time we bring this up and they're like oh I'm so glad you're doing this. Maybe they're busy and they can't take on other things because commitments to work and and family and, and that's totally understandable like we're all super busy too, but um, if there is something, some way that they can contribute, I, I think uh, they're actually excited to uh, to become involved, and so we try to take advantage of that and not stifle it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I totally, um, I totally agree, and I, I agree. I think it's, I think it's both. I do think that this can feel really overwhelming, mm-hmm. um, and so I. But I think that there's there's small things that you can that we can do as clinicians, um, and so please please reach out to us because we can point you in the direction of the small things you can do. I mean, you know, you can um, join the listservs of some of the state level advocacy groups like Penn Environment or Penn Futures, and they always need clinicians to sign on to to things. It it really helps them out a lot, and that's mm. a small like that's a small thing you can do. Like, you know, if if you Again, we haven't talked a lot about individual level, level mitigation, but you know, if you have questions about getting solar panels, you know, there are so there are so many things that that you that we can do, and we can point you in the right direction. So please, please let us um, please let us know. And I'll also say that the other thing about climate is it relates to every other child health issue. So no matter what your your passion is, what you're dedicated to, climate probably relates in some way. So my my work has been for for a long time an intimate partner violence and um, violence and climate are um, really interwoven. There's actually just a study came, that came out that showed that it was a, a global study that showed that um, intimate partner violence was related to heat insofar as as the temperatures increased, intimate partner violence also increased wow. because we know that there's a, a link between violence and climate. And so that's just one example, but I would just encourage everybody because i know everyone here is so passionate and dedicated to child health that whatever you are passionate about the climate is related so please like let us know how we can help how we can support you in including climate work into the work you're already doing Fascinating. yeah that's that's really important i think to let people know that there's an option to reach out to yeah yeah in closing can i ask you two, where do you see your group going? What are your future plans? Any initiatives in the process right now? That um, I'm excited about trying to um, inspire other healthcare systems to kind of follow um, our success. Nice. Uh, right currently, uh, as I as I understand it, UPMC is the only health system in Pennsylvania that has signed this uh, health sector climate pledge, and it would be so great to have you know, Allegheny Health Network and um, uh, Penn State and uh, all, not to like specify everyone, anyone in particular, but like other organizations basically um, continue the work that we're doing because uh, I think that would just really uh, amplify what we're trying to accomplish. Bring in more people, more hands on deck. I think uh, it's a, a movement really and uh, everyone can play a role, you know, in a positive way so um that that's a really our hope that's yeah. awesome yeah no it's 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 really exciting where this group is going i one of the things that i'm really excited about is bringing in community voices so leveraging kind of the community partnered work that i do to bring in community voices and hear how they would like uh clinicians for climate um, action to continue and what things they they think would be helpful for healthcare systems to do there's a lot of incredible community um partnered work in environmental justice in pittsburgh i mean we're just like we're so lucky with the um, the 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 wisdom and the expertise of the community-based organizations and community leaders in Pittsburgh. So I'm really excited about moving that that forward um, with with a health equity lens to it. So yeah, it would be great also if we could include the website information so people know how to reach out to your group and get additional help. Could you share that information with us? So the website is 
www.c4ca.pit.edu. And thanks to University of Pittsburgh for letting us use your platform. Also, uh, we're on Twitter or X uh, at Clinician Climate without an E at the end. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Doctors Raghavan and Cisneros, we really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. What your group is doing is not only inspiring, but bringing a tangibility to a, I'll take Amanda's word, overwhelming Mm. issue and giving avenues for people to work both at the ground level as well as from a bigger picture too. And we really appreciate your help and support and what you've done so far. Thanks so much for having us. This is great. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thanks. For more information about this podcast or our guests, please visit chp.edu slash that's pediatrics. If you've enjoyed this episode, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to keep up with our new content. You can also email us at podcast.upmc at gmail.com with any feedback or ideas for topics you'd like our experts to cover on future episodes. Thank you again for listening to That's Pediatrics. Tune in next time.